Dr. Sandra Bastin again, along with Ann Hall Norris. We're from the University of Kentucky Cooperative Extension Service, and we're going to show you how to make zesty salsa in a boiling water bath. Take it away. Okay, so I've got my ball recipe. I'm going to go over the ingredients. Uh, Sandra and I have already pre chopped all of the vegetables to make this video a little bit shorter, but we're going to use fresh tomatoes, fresh green peppers, some onion, a little bit of jalapeno pepper to give it a little bit of heat. We have some garlic chopped up with our onion. We have fresh cilantro. We have some salt and we have our cider vinegar. And so the recipe calls to chop everything up and put it in a saucepan and simmer for 10 minutes. And then we're going to ladle it into our jars and process it in the water bath canner. So before we get started making the salsa, I wanna show you a, um, a nice little tip on peeling your tomatoes. So you can do this before you make salsa or before you can your tomatoes. But you wanna start by taking a, a paring knife and just making a small X on the bottom of your tomato. And we're gonna blanch these tomatoes in boiling water for about a minute or a little bit longer until the skin starts to peel away from the X that I've made and then we're gonna plunge them into ice water to stop that process. So let's go ahead and drop them in our boiling water. I'm gonna use these so I don't get burned. I'm just gonna let them sit, kinda of move them around so that we can watch the peel on the bottom start to move away. If you have a timer, you can set your timer. It goes about a minute, minute and a half. So it's been just about a minute and I'm gonna go ahead and pull these tomatoes out of the water. You can see how the skin is starting to separate just a little around that X. So we wanna take them out and plunge them right into that ice water. Stop them from cooking. And then as you pick up the tomato, you can see that the skin just peels right off. Very simple. And that tomato is still fresh. It hadn't been cooked. You can go ahead and chop it up, can it, or uh, put it in your salsa. Okay. We're just going to combine all the ingredients into one saucepan and stir and simmer for 10 minutes. Here's our vinegar. And our garlic and our fresh cilantro. And we'll just let that simmer. So while our salsa is coming to a simmer, I want to talk to you a little bit about the vinegar that I put in this recipe. Um, you want to make sure that you're adding acid when you're using a boiling water bath canner. And so all of your salsa recipes are going to call for lemon juice, lime juice, or vinegar. And when you're canning, you want to make sure that your vinegar has 5% acidity. And it will say that on the label. You can see on this particular bottle, it's right down in the center and it says 5% acidity. And that's what ensures a safe product. You'll find vinegar out there that might be 3% or 4%, but you don't want to use that when you're canning. You want to make sure you're using a 5% acidity vinegar when you're making your salsas and your pickles. Our salsa has simmered in the pan for about 10 minutes or so. I've got my jars hot in preparation to fill. You always want to fill into hot jars. You don't want to fill into a cold jar because when you put it down in that boiling water, it will break. So you want your jars hot when you fill them. We're gonna use our, our funnel just to make the, the outside rim of the jar a little bit cleaner. Um, and it makes cleanup easier in the end too. It's a lot easier to fill in this funnel. You don't slosh it everywhere. And so our recipe calls for us to fill to a half inch head space. You'll remember that most acidified foods, your pickled foods, your salsas, are gonna have a head space of a half inch. We're gonna remove the air bubbles. And you wanna use a, the, this plastic head space measurer 
to remove your air bubbles. You don't want to use a metal knife or anything sharp because you might uh, nick the inside of the glass or cause a crack. Sandra and I have cut our recipe um, in half, and so we might only have two jars to fill. And you'll sometimes find that you won't be able to fill up every single jar in your canner. So you can just keep that and refrigerate it, or you can eat it right now. You don't want to keep it for longer than a week in the refrigerator if it hasn't been processed. So now that we have our jar filled to the proper headspace, we're going to wipe the rim and make sure it's clean. You don't want any food particles between the flat lid and the, the rim of the jar. And then we're going to put our ring on just to finger tight. And I want to show you too, um, you want to make sure that your rings are, are, are clean and don't have any rust on the inside. You reuse the um, rings each time, but if you don't dry them and the rust will collect, you don't want to use a rusty ring. Okay, so we've got our jar ready to go in the canner. We've got the rack raised so it's easier to lower down into the water. Is that hot? We'll lower that rack, our water is boiling. Want to make sure that the water covers the top of the jar by a couple of inches, continues to boil, and then you want to start your timer. And this particular recipe calls for us to process for 15 minutes. Okay, so our timer yes. just went off. Sandra is going to carefully lift the jar straight up and out of the canner. You'll notice there will be some water pooled on top of the flat lid, and you may be tempted to tilt the jar and pour that water off. But don't do that. We don't want to take a chance and allow any food to slip up underneath the lid and prevent it from sealing. Now place the jar on a clean towel and allow it to cool and pull a vacuum seal. As the jar cools, you will probably hear a pop and that's the button in the center of that flat lid going down. The button will be sunken or concave. It will no longer press up and down when you press your finger on it. So this is the salsa left in the pan that we didn't have um, enough to fill a whole jar. So Sandra and I are gonna enjoy that right now. And then we'll start our next video on pressure canning vegetables. <laughs>